We're on lesson one of chapter eight, which we're going to add and subtract polynomials. First, we're going to identify and rewrite polynomials. Then we're going to add and subtract polynomials. Then we'll solve a real world problem. Before we look at what polynomials are, first we're going to look at monomial. Mono means one, poly means many, so they are related. One nomial or a mononomial could be any of these things. They could be a number, they could be a variable, or they could be the product of a number and one or more variables with positive exponents, such as 2xy to the third. We have a number, we have one or more, so two variables here, and then a positive exponent here, and a positive one exponent here. Here's where the word poly comes into play, because sometimes there's more than just monomials. There could be binomials, which have two terms, such as 2x to the third plus 23, separated by that adding sign. There's also trinomials, too, which have three terms, so 4x to the fourth plus 2x minus 5. I see three different monomials here, making it a trinomial. Tri means three. Monomials also have degrees. The degree of the monomial is found by the sum of the exponents of the variable in the monomial. So for example, if we have the monomial of 10 because it's a number, it's actually going to be to the zero degree because there's no variable exponents. 3x, we have x to the first power, so that makes it in the first degree. Here we have 1 half times a times b squared. Well, a is to the first, b is to the second, so add those together and that gives us 3. Here we have negative 1.8 times m to the fifth. m is to the fifth power, so that's to the fifth degree. Not everything is a monomial, however, so let's look at these and find out why they are not monomials. 5 plus x is not a monomial because you remember monomial means 1. I have two monomials here, making it a binomial. So whenever you add, a sum is not a monomial or a difference either. We also have 2 divided by n, or 2 over n is a fraction. That's not a monomial because a monomial cannot have a variable in the denominator. We also can't have 4 to the a power or 4 to a variable power. That is not allowed as well. That's not a monomial. And then we have x to the negative first. That's not a monomial either because of this negative 1 here. The variable must have a whole number exponent. Negative numbers are not whole numbers. It has to be positive then. So let's put this to use. It says tell whether the expression is a polynomial. If it is a polynomial, find its degree and then classify it by the number of its terms. Otherwise, tell us why it's not a polynomial. So first we have this expression 9. Is that a polynomial? Yes, a number is a polynomial. What is its degree? Well, there's no variable, so it's the zero degree. And then this would just be a monomial. So we'll say zero and then monomial, because it's only one term. Here I have 2x squared plus x minus 5. All these are monomials, so that would be, yes, it is a polynomial. Since this is being added and not multiplied, I only count this one for my degree because it's the biggest. So x squared is in the second degree, and that would be a binomial. Now over here, we have 6n to the fourth minus 8 to the n power. Remember, that's not a polynomial because you can't have a variable exponent. We have n to the negative second minus 3, and that's also not a polynomial because that negative second exponent, so we'll say negative exponent. Now we have 7 times b times c to the third plus 4. This would be the larger variables over here, because this one doesn't even have variables. So this would be a polynomial, because they're both monomials. As far as the degree goes, this would be 1, this would be 3, so it would be the fourth degree. And we're going to call it a binomial. Whenever we write binomials or trinomials, it's important to write them in the proper order. The exponents need to decrease from left to right, and that's what it's asking us to do here. Then it says identify the degree of the leading coefficient of the polynomial. So the exponents need to decrease. I have an x to the third here. I have just an x, which would be x to the first. Then I have a zero degree polynomial here. So we're going to make this go first because it's to the third power. See how I included that negative sign? So negative x to the third. Then we have positive 15x. And then positive 3. This would be in the proper order. The degree of the leading coefficient would be this, so it would be the third degree. Now we get to add and subtract polynomials. Here we have to find like terms to add and subtract. 
So for example, if I have 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus x, and I have 2x squared plus x to the third minus 1, I can start with the largest coefficients, which would be these ones here, and then add them together. Always remember that sign in front, which would be a positive here. 2x to the third plus x to the third is 3x to the third. Now I have x to the second, so I have minus 5x to the second. I have positive 2x to the second. That would give me negative 3, so minus 3x to the second. Now I just have the variable x by itself, so just plus x. And I have minus 1 over here, so minus 1. Here's my polynomial. You don't have to do it in different colors, that's just how I keep track. So for this one over here, we have 3x squared plus x minus 6, and then x squared plus 4x plus 10. So this one's a nice proper order, which makes it easier. That gives me 4x squared. I have positive x here, I have positive 4x, so that's plus 5x. This is negative 6, and that's positive 10, so that'd be positive 4. 4x squared plus 5x plus 4. When you're subtracting like this, it's really important to remember that you're kind of distributing this negative. It's like kind of like multiplying times negative 1 with everything. So this would actually become a positive 2n squared. This would become a minus 2n. And this becomes a plus 4. And that means we can kind of just add this now because we've already applied that negative number. So we have 4n squared plus 5 plus 2n squared minus 2n plus 4. So I have 4n squared and positive 2n squared, so that gives me 6n squared. I have minus 2n, positive 5, and positive 4 make positive 9. Do the same thing over here, distribute that negative. So I have negative 3x squared plus x plus 8. I have positive 4x squared minus 3x squared, so that's positive 1x squared. Negative 3x plus x, that's negative 2x or minus 2x. Positive 5 and positive 8 gives me positive 13. Now we can solve a real world problem. It says Major League Baseball teams are divided into two leagues. During the period of 1995 to 2001, the attendance N and A in thousands at National and American League Baseball games respectively can be modeled by N for National League, negative 488T squared, plus 5,430t, plus 24,700. And A for American, negative 318t squared, plus 3,040t, plus 25,600. It says T is the number of years since 1995. How many people attended Major League Baseball games in 2001? Well, first we need to add this polynomial because it's asking us about Major League Baseball, and both National American are part of Major League Baseball. And here it's all nicely lined up, up and down, so we can just kind of have a plus sign here and get our answer. We have negative 488 minus 318. Together that's going to be negative 806. That would be t squared. We have positive 5430 and a positive 3040. That would be a positive or plus 8470 t. And then these two numbers together, 24,700 and 25,600, gives me 50,300. So I can't solve this yet if I don't know what t is. But it says t is years since 1995, and it's asking us to solve for 2001. So that would be six years. So if I rewrite this problem, it would be negative 806 times 6 squared plus 8,470 times 6, plus 50,300. 6 squared is 36, so 36 times 806 would be negative 29,016. 8,470 times 6 is 50,820. Then I have this 50,300 here. Adding them all together gives me an answer of 72,104. That might seem a little low for a whole year. Remember, this is in thousands. So if you want to give the correct answer, I could add 1,000 to that or multiply that times 1,000, which would be adding three zeros on the end. So the real number would be 72,104,000.